Hey guys, Christina Ritchie. If you want more pars and more power off the tee, let's find out what your dominant force is. All right, there's three main forces in the golf swing. There's horizontal, rotational, and vertical. What's yours? Let's find out. All right, so there are three types of power sources. One is more linear, is the one I use. So it's more of a linear, so I like to feel the weight back and front. There's one that's more rotational, so players that can really rotate and stay centered at a lot of speed with their rotation. And the third is the vertical jump, so where you see players get airborne through the ball. Lexi Thompson is a great example. Adam Scott is a great example of horizontal. Rotational would be Rory McIlroy. Justin Thomas, vertical jump. The key is you gotta find out what your dominant power source is. So I know mine's horizontal, what's yours? And then you capitalize on that. All right, so really understanding what your dominant power source is is very important to help you get more distance off the tee and fairway. Now good pairings are if you're a rotational, real centered, a good pairing is the vertical jump. So if you're a player that has limited rotation, the horizontal is going to be a great power source for you. Now there's no better power source. I mean, they're all awesome. All right, so they measure this on technology such as swing catalysts, and it's really determining what your strength is. All right, so that's important. All right, so the first step is to head to morepowers.com or morepowers.tv and take the power assessments. And if you can easily do two, then up the weight. You're just going to pull. Yep. 50% of your body weight. Now, arm speed in the golf swing is really important. 10 feet to start and then every five to sit up straight and throw it. All right, you got to find out what your body can and cannot do and what the dominant strength is. All right, so if you're a powerhouse with your legs, you might be more inclined to do a vertical jump. If you're a player in your golf swing that has this awesome squat, you might be one for a vertical force. All right, if you're a player that is dominant with your upper body and you have really good mobility, you could be a player that has strong rotation. And if you're a player that's balanced, so say you're balanced across your whole body, you've got options, all right? But typically, players are typically dominant with their either upper or their lower. Take the power assessments, that's step one. Step two, work with a golf professional to find out what your dominant power source is. And then when you find it, groove it. Now here are some things that can go off with each power source. With the horizontal, you can imagine that where players go off is they slide, all right? So they have too much horizontal, all right? Most players, newer players tend to sway, better players tend to slide. So if you're tight in your hip or you're weak in your glute and you're not able to sit into this hip, you may be a swayer. And then if you're not stable, maybe you're not loading your glute, not loading your big toe, definitely check out that video. Right, maybe you're not able to stabilize on the downswing so you have a little slide. Or maybe your torso's hanging back and that's forcing you to slide. All right? But either way, all those are horizontal culprits that'll throw your swing off. For rotational players, players that have a lot of rotation, all right, the tendency there, the big culprit there, is over-rotating getting reverse spine angle where your spine angles back towards the target. All right, so players, especially women that are hypermobile, all right, they're not able to, they can actually go way beyond their end range. They have a lot of mobility, so you need more stability. Rotation is good, but if it's overdone, you're in trouble, you're out of position. All right, so that's what happens with rotational players. And then the vertical jump, what happens with that is they do it too soon or towards the ball. If players come in and they move towards the ball and they jump too early and they're not actually doing the vertical jump with their butt, they're actually just thrusting their hips towards the ball, call that early extension where you kind of move in towards the ball, that's not actually a vertical jump, that's just early extension. So a vertical jump is really leveraging the ground so players that do it really, really well have the squat move and then they literally use that force and jump but they're 
pelvis stays in position so they can do it. Where players go off is they'll move towards the ball and they'll just thrust their hips. Right? That's not really a vertical jump, that's just a thrusting of the hip. That's not really leveraging the ground, that's just doing the movement but not really getting the results. Went to the PGA show a few years back when Swing Catalyst first came out and they put me on it and I had a really strong horizontal ground force. It was real linear and straight. And they said, you should get on the, the tournament board. We're having a competition. And I was like number two for a long time and then someone beat me. All right, so, <laughs> so that's when I was actually confirmed through Swing Catalyst that I was horizontal, real strong in that area. All right, so if you have an opportunity to get on Swing Catalyst, I highly recommend it. Google it and find out who has it near you. Get on it and find out what your source is. It's well worth it. All right, so you can see I have a lot of lateral, but just the right amount. Now my tendency is I slide. All right, so I'm always focused on that. You need to focus on what your dominant power source is and then be mindful of what can go off so you can keep an eye on it. I mean, that's the key. 